What's going on, Money Geeks? Mr. V here. Welcome to another video, guys. So in today's video, um, I want to break down my trades for um, um, November 4th. Just going to show you guys some of the stocks that I traded and um, uh, why I traded them. But um, all in all, it was actually a good day uh, to start with. So we we had about $1,500 in, in, in profit for the day. Um, and, and guys, remember that my actual daily goal is $250. Um, so if you are doing this and you are somebody that is consistently making $250 a day, I would invite you to join the $250 a day cycle of influence. So um, I'm gonna, I am gonna, want to get your information so that you can join that club um, and so we can uh, grow and grow the number of people making $250 a day consistently trading the market. So um, that's what we got, $1,500. It's a good day. I can't complain. I could have made more, but guys, I'm not a greedy savage, so I don't uh, try to go in for a lot more. But also, if you see down here, there's one trade that I made. I could have made more again, like I said, but I, there was one trade that actually got me, if you see here, negative $324. Uh, and I'm going to explain to you guys how that happened and it will be a very good lesson uh for those of you out there so let's jump in here and just kind of take a look at some of the stocks that i traded um the first one that i traded um again i'm going to bring this up here the first one that i traded was ticket symbol nio neo this is an electric car vehicle a chinese electric um car manufacturer so um i got a new stock uh, the market opened as you can see, um, market open, it was just kind of choppy, um, just kind of moving up and down there. I, I call it zigzagging uh, right up on, on VWAP. So I wanted this thing to settle down before I could even try trading it. Um, and for some context, because um, I, I knew the stock was going to pop because the um, last night after hours, it did really good. It was just going up. So I knew if we get up this morning, yeah, it will get some continuation of uh, that momentum so i waited um look at this pullback and then it got down to the support about 36 dollars and 20 cents um and then that's where you actually turn around and then start and moving up so i waited um see right here where um it crosses the vwap and i waited for that confirmation so um and if you see volume was coming in really really good um so it crosses vwap here and again, most of you guys was asking, Mr. V, um, what do you mean by you see confirmation? And I, again, guys, this is my personal approach. Uh, this is my strategy. So um, take it, um, use it if you can. Otherwise, try to um, implement your own strategy and test it, see if it works out for you. So basically what uh, my confirmation would be, um, once uh, this thing crosses VWAP and I look at the volume, solid volume right here, I wait for, so the first cross here is this candle right here, um, this candle right here. And then I wait for the next candle, which is the first one minute candle to make a new high because I'm using the one uh, minute interval here. The first one minute candle to make a new high, that one set up. As soon as it makes that new high, I wait for a pullback, I, I get in. So as soon as I got in this, I just, it stayed choppy and I stayed with the trade. I didn't jump right out. I stayed with it. Um, I just kept my eye on the volume. The volume was still looking pretty good. As you can see here, solid volume. So I knew something was just about ready to pop. Um, and so when you start, when it got to this point right here, um, these two red candles, I, I started getting, getting nervous a little bit because look at the volume started dropping. So it's like, huh, uh, hopefully this thing doesn't go and kick me out on my stop loss. And then next thing I know, it just rips. Um, and see, it just rips from there and pull all the way to uh, 37, 69. Um, and I still hang in there. It kept, it went up and I just kept following, moving my stop loss and following along until um, right here at 811. This is where I got out of the trade um, because I noticed the volume started to drop here. If you look down here, the, the volume started to, to, to drop. And here's the one thing that uh, I want you guys to be very, very uh, aware of. Um, usually when you see a spike in the price um, and then you see the volume goes down, 
in my experience, I, that has always resulted in some sort of a reverser. The price went down right after that. So you see like a, a quick bust, like this thing is about to really rip. And then you, but when you look at the volume, the volume is going down instead. The volume doesn't support that. So just know that is a, a quick sign of reverser. So that's why when we got up here, I took my profit and I got out. So um, it was, it was a, it was a good trade. I mean, if I, I could have stayed in here, um, throughout and be able to you see, cause it finally the stock thing for that went up all the way to 39, 75 for high, but I didn't have the patience and I didn't want to take that chance to stay in there that long. So I just took my profit and walked away. See, so we hit 39 and then pull back all the way down to 38.18. Um, and then finish the day heading south. Um, look at all that movement south. So it would have been a great opportunity to short it, uh, going south. Um, but I didn't really, I wasn't on my desk all day to kind of take care of that or take advantage of that. So, um, that's why. So the next, uh, one that I traded again was, uh, Tesla. So Tesla was, I mean, see, if you see right here, Tesla opened up the day, uh, right off the gate, like it ripped, look at this from, I think 428 all the way to 435. And then look at that collapse. So this is, again, this is the one thing you have to be very careful. And when you look at this scenario, this is where your uh, stop loss comes into play. Because if you were in this trade as ripping, you're probably smiling like, oh, I'm in the money. But if you didn't have a stop loss, see how quick the thing reverses and goes south. Look at that move. This is, I mean, like it's like, like a landslide. So you have to have you stop loss. I don't care how experienced you are, stop loss will save you from completely frying your account. You know, I mean, it would just help you not blow up your account. So please, please always use stop loss. And again, I'm going to do a video, I think, because uh, a lot of you guys have been asking how you can actually leverage um, that stop loss and continually move it and follow your trade as it goes. So I'm going to do a live video. I'll record a live video um, using that stop loss so you guys can actually see. So this was another good trade uh, with Tesla. Thing made about three hundred and seventy-five dollars uh, in profit. Um, then the next one was Qualcomm. So this one, um, see, look at the day it started up um, and just completely uh, landslide, and then picked up again. So I didn't trade it all day, pretty much. Um, so you can see here, I didn't trade it. Um, look at this. So if I zoom in closer, you see it didn't really make a ton of crazy move. But look at what happened after hours. Boy, oh boy, this is ridiculous. Um, after hours, they had their earnings call, guys. And I do post these earnings calls, um, earnings uh, uh, sheets every um, week on, on the channel. So if you've been looking at my post on the channel, you'll realize that I do post their most anticipated earnings. Uh, uh, re uh, reports for that week. So like this week, um, after I was Qualcomm was number one and look at what happened right there. Look at that, that move. And I wasn't there when it started ripping. So I came in like this first move right here, where you go from 129 all the way to 133 and some change. Um, I didn't catch that. So I came back, I came in and, and traded somewhere around here, made some profit. And then stepped out, came back, and it was still ripping. And I traded somewhere around here, delivered some profit. So with with that, um, I ended up with three oh nine in profit. So um, see, then it got to one forty eight, and that's where um, it just stayed all day and didn't actually move. So, which was, I mean, I think it was awesome. Um, so hopefully tomorrow morning uh, this will be a good one because people that don't trade after hours. They're probably going to see this in the morning and go crazy. So hopefully the price keeps moving um, after um, tomorrow morning. Sorry. Next one is Wayfair. So uh, let me move this here so you can see. Um, see when market opens. Um, see it pulled back to one two forty seven and then rip. So I traded Wayfair well, right here where it crosses VWAP. So I traded it right here all the way up here. Um, and I made $258 in that particular trade. So that was a good one too. Um, otherwise there was some actions there throughout the day, but, um, 
And here's the thing. Uh, usually when I make profit in a trade, unless I see an excellent setup, I don't go back to that very that same stock because that's where you get burned because you start to be lousy and think that, oh, I got this. I traded it and made money, so I'm going to go in again. That's where you get burned. The next one on the list here is BIIB. BIIB. So let me bring this. Let me zoom in here so you guys can actually see. So BIIB, um, there was a catalyst for this one. There was some news uh, about their Alzheimer drug that the FDA approved. So notice that this one started the day pretty much mellow, nothing. Um, then just out of a sudden, look look the volume that came in. And this thing went from 261, ripped all the way to 363 for a high. Guys, this is one of those trades where if you uh, were able to cash this run, I mean, like you can just retire for the month and, and take that month off from that one trade. Um, and, and I'm ashamed to tell you guys, I missed it. I didn't catch this um, right here, all this move. I missed it. Um, it yeah, it's unfortunate. I finally got into the trade um, somewhere around here. Um, so I traded somewhere here, bought it here, and it squeezed all the way up. Uh, here and I sold. So in that particular, this one I made one hundred and sixty, one hundred and sixty-seven dollars. Um, then see, look at that collapse, and then uh, some moves here. So, uh, bottom line, uh, I wish I had seen this this move right here. This this squeeze, I would have been awesome, but I didn't. I didn't see it. And then uh, I think that was the the, the, the main trades I had. And then here's the one that I said I I, I made a mistake and actually um, lost money uh, in the trade. So this is after, this is a pre market, right? So look right here, this thing popped up all the way to two or uh, two point zero six or two point zero eight. You're thinking like, oh man, it's looking good. So it pulls back, and then just right when the market was about to open, um, see that this squeeze right here. Again, I'm using the one minute chart. So I am I was anticipating that this thing was gonna move, but here's the mistake that I made um in this particular one. And again, I'm not immune to mistakes, guys. And that's why I'm sharing uh, my mistakes with you so that you guys can learn from it. So I, I looked at this move here, uh, and I was anticipating that um this thing was gonna gap a little bit before the market opens. Um, because right here. So if we look at usually the one is one mini candle here. I was thinking that before the market would open um, at eight thirty, in between here I should see some nice run, but that wasn't the case. So I got in here at about one. I think I got in here at about one eighty and some change. I think uh, or is it one eighty? Yep. So one point eight. Sorry. So I got in at about one point eight and some change. Um, hoping that so it gapped up right up there and then pulled back. I got in hoping that it would pop again, um, but it didn't. It just stayed there and then pulled down. So as of this point, I was in the red, volume was low. And then, so here's the thing that killed me. I put in my order to sell it and get out and so that I don't have to incur that, that it can cure a ton of um, uh, loss. But because there was no volume, when I put in an order to sell a thousand shares, what happened was um, it kept, uh, I kept, getting just about 50 100 or this fill out of a thousand so uh, i'll go to fill 50 now i'm left with 950 the price drops i go in the fill like 100 i'm left with uh 850 the price kept dropping and i kept moving myself my sell price down 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 until i was able to get out of it so this was a a huge mistake and i hope this is something that you guys can learn from always always uh make sure that you look at the volume and that's the one of the reasons why I say trading pre-market volume is very, very important. If you don't take care of volume in the pre-market, you're going to run into the problems that I ran into. So, and that cost me money. So I just want to kind of put that out there for you guys to be uh, very careful. So um, tomorrow, or uh, again, guys, one of the things that I'm, I, I keep telling you guys, keep your eyes on these earnings reports because some of them are like gold mine. So again, if you look at Qualcomm here, if you... If you trade this stock, look at from here at 2, 129, it squeezed all the way to 148. I mean, 
that's that's a no-brainer. You can't you can't beat that. So um, that would have been a good trade the way you can make some good money. So keep you guys keep your eyes on um, earnings report. They are really good. I know I talk about using the gap scanner. That's on a daily basis. But this we have earnings reports like this. You want to take advantage of it. So let me know in the comment section, guys. What do you think about this video? Do you think this this uh, approach of kind of breaking down the trades that I did uh, was really important? Um, and if you want in depth, also um, again, these are these are gap and go strategy. So this is not um, one where you're looking at um, you know really getting some 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 support and and setting you know your resistance. In this case, these are stocks that are gapping, and when they're gapping, you jump in, take profit, and you head out. And so, and what you're looking at is you're looking at the volume that's coming through. You're looking at your indicators, your MACD, your RSI, uh, and your VWAP. You're looking at those like, hey, is this a good opportunity to get in? So you get in and take the profit, the little profit, and go. So uh, some people call it scarping, but again, you are not sitting there waiting for a massive return. You just want to get some profit and get out. So again, let me know in the comment section. If you're new to the channel, we talk about how to earn money, how to save money, how to invest and build wealth. So if that's something that interests you, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on your content. And also, if you're looking to get started with investing, uh, definitely check out Weibo. Uh, they have an excellent platform, which is what I use here for trading. I'm going to put the links in the description. Definitely go give them a, uh, you know, just you know, check them out. And as always, guys, don't be a greedy savage and stay motivated.